Childhoods like non-returnable bottles. Childhoods at risk. Lost. These are the lives of 3,000 children in Ulaanbaatar, the capital of Mongolia. Every night they find shelter in the manholes of the town in order to escape the great cold. Every morning they come out from underground to look for some food in the sweepings along the streets. Why do you live here rather than with your parents? I don't have parents. My father died, and so I came here. I stole money at home, and they threw me out. Where are your parents? In King Elte. In Erdene. I don't know. How long have I been living here? Two years. Three years. One year. It's warm down here. Yes. It's very warm. Maybe 25 degrees Celsius. I'm sweating down here. Yes, it's warm. It's comfortable. In winter, outside, it's 25 degrees below zero. Sometimes even 40 degrees. What do you want to do in the future? I would like to go to school. To find my parents. I would like to come back home. I would like to live better with new and warm clothes. I would like not to starve anymore. I want to go away from here as soon as possible. In the capital, Ulaanbaatar, live a million people, half of the whole population of Mongolia. Eleven years have passed since the socialist government fell, but the signs left by 70 years of Soviet rule are still clear in the architecture as well as in the monuments. People are attracted to the capital by uncertain prospects of work, by the desire for money, goods, and Western-type comforts. The impact of the town for a nomad who has always lived in small centers or in the steppe is often shocking. In Ulaanbaatar especially, the economic reforms started at the conquest of democracy and the removal from the Soviet bloc caused the most devastating social impact. In five years, more than one-third of the population was reduced to very grave poverty. People have become more and more poor. The rate of unemployment has increased terribly, with a consequent difficulty in adjusting to the new environment. Alcoholism is widespread, and so there is violence in the families, and this is the main reason why children run away from their homes. 
and why they are in the streets now. These children look for a shelter in the underbelly of the city, underground, where the heating tubes pass. This situation is extremely dangerous, not to mention the unhygienic conditions. They're in a situation where they could experience any kind of violence. A recent inquiry about the street children shows that most of these children have sexually transmitted diseases. They evidently are in a situation in which children of 10, 11 or even younger have sexual intercourse. My name is Corlay and I'm 13 years old. I don't go to school and I can't find my parents. I am an only child. I would like to find some money to go looking for my grandmother and get some news about my parents. Nine people already live at my grandmother's. I've been living here for five months now. Poverty in Mongolia is a recent fact, born between 1990 and 1995, when economic reforms started. During the Soviet regime, problems were not unknown, but everyone could guarantee themselves a decent level of subsistence and an elevated grade of instruction. Everyone nowadays can read and write with a high percentage of qualified graduates. The new poor, more than one third of the Mongolian population, are the dark side of changes which have enlarged social differences. They are the sorrowful side of the new rich. Wild people in the degraded suburbs look for leftovers in the trash. In the Sinti center, Western patterns and products spread. In the capital, there are people who, thanks to the reforms, have become very rich and now parade affluence, which was almost unimaginable a few years ago. This way, the country is splitting up more and more rapidly. The ones who have nothing left lose hope, fall into depression, and can no longer react. My name is Enk Bayar, and I've been living here for six months. This is my home. My parents divorced, and my mother got married again. Her new husband couldn't stand me, and he always beat me. Any time I went to visit my father, I always found him drunk, and he used to beat me as well. So I decided to come here. I used to go to school, but I had to leave it because of the situation of mine. I need clothes. I don't know what I will do in the future. Every morning, about 3,000 children from the underground of Ulaanbaatar leave their shelters and go wandering in the vast suburbs. Some go searching for work in the markets, some steal, but most of the children rummage in the garbage, picking up bottles and other objects they can sell again. They move to the center to eat in the dumps of the hotels. Here is where, with vaguely edible table scraps, they have their meals. They are usually children who run away. Sometimes they are two little brothers or two little sisters. Or they are children who are left by their parents because the father is an alcoholic or the mother is ill. But there are many more reasons. Afterwards, they join together and they form little groups. But up until now, I don't think that they have established criminal gangs. Il 
The best help that could be given is for at least one of the two parents to find a job. The information we have, in fact, shows that when a job is found, even if it's temporary, for at least one of the parents, it's much easier for a child to come back home. Besides UNICEF, there are 28 care centers run by volunteers in Ulaanbaatar. They guarantee board and lodging to the abandoned children in the Mongolian capital and try to place them in their families again and get them back in school. These centers keep on working thanks to the funds coming mainly from Western countries. However, they are not sufficient to cope with the emergency of the 3,000 children from the underground. Father Gilbert, a Philippine Catholic priest, runs one of these centers. There are 120 children in the center now. We started very small actually in 1995, there were only 15. But uh, in the years afterwards, the problem of the street children got worse. And when I take them out from the streets, we bring, we enroll them either to the kindergarten, especially with kids like this, and uh, the bigger ones, we enroll them to uh, the different public schools around. And we employ also teachers around here in uh, the center to follow up the studies of the children, because not all of the children are intellectually uh, capable. Every Wednesday, the center run by Father Gilbert is open to the old, as well as to the poor and the homeless. There is a warm meal for everybody. In the center, it is possible to achieve good results with the smaller children, who often are there with their parents' permission. It's often possible to rebuild the relationships within the original families and the school. Good nourishment, health care, clothes, attention and love are guaranteed to the children. The greatest problems concern the bigger children from 10 years up. Actually, the children, when they are uh, in the streets for six months, for more than six months, it's very difficult for them to stay in a center like this. It's either that they, they're here for one day and then they leave, or they don't want to come at all. So what do they do in the streets? Uh, you know, a normal street child would uh, look for something to be able to survive. And the only way to survive is to steal or to pickpocket or to... You know, do some works also like cleaning cars or cleaning shoes. So these are the things that the, the street children do in the streets. Most of them, if they've been long enough in the, the streets, uh, you could not uh, let them stay for a long time in the center like this. temperature goes down. Another night begins for the children who live in the town manholes. Another night to survive in the warmth and the unbearable stench of the bowels of Ulaanbaatar. <laughs> 